Right, guys, let's get building part one of Hobby Boss's M1070 truck, tractor, and M1000 heavy equipment transport semi trailer, or HETS for short. So, following from the inbox review, part one is chassis of the vehicle. And this is where we find the delights of a Japanese, a Japanese or Chinese kit, in that their sprue organization's a bit here and there. So if we look at this, we've got sprue D, H, B, K, G, A, E, and we've got some photo edge. <laughs> so we've got a few sprues to find. So, we have four sprue H's, we've got uh, sprue E, sprue D, sprue A, what am I missing, sprue K, let me find K. G F K. So there is at least two sprues of K. So there we go. We've got to go and find all our parts in amongst all these sprues. Now, I might not bother some folks, but it's a bit blooming tedious. But here we are, we are where we are. So what do I usually do with things like this? Well, it's just the case to start snipping. What I like to do is get all the parts off roughly in the order of the instructions. So this is a one and we can see what parts this, that's A29, that's A1. So we'll lay them out as they are in the instructions and then that helps us just um, not lose our place and not get confused because when you're doing really in technical in-depth builds like this it's very very easy to get lost in the lost in the jungle basically of all these parts all right so if you use your instruction picture guide as your guide and then just start setting the parts out as they would appear and obviously you've got to turn them and move them around so you've got to remind that that's A1, but that's still A1, but you've got the inside and the outside faces. Um, whereas on this side, you've just got the orientation where you see in the outside face, but you are putting parts of the inside face. So happy days, A28, A27, so this is part of the transmission. A6, is that one there? And I go back to what I said in the uh, in the review, the quality of the parts are really rather nice. Really nice moulding. Good sharp defined detail that will take paint nicely. Righty, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do, because I'm sure you don't want to see me sit and cut parts all this time is I'll get all the parts cut off when needed. We'll get them kind of laid out as we see them in the instructions and then we can start gluing together. So back in a mo. We're back. And that was some trial. So it's probably taken me about before I've cut everything off, cleaned it up and got it glued together in sub assembly. There's probably about an hour's worth of work there. So we've got a whole set of cross members, transmission, and then a rear cross member and two chassis members and I haven't even started looking at all these um, small bits that need to be glued um, on the outside of the chassis rail and I've still got to actually look at this as inside chassis rail stuff here as well so I've still got to do these few bits so um, right welcome back guys so, after about an hour of clipping, cleaning, and gluing, <laughs> which I didn't think you'd really want to watch, 
we've got to the point where we're nearly able to put the chassis members together. So that's this side, that is that side. I have got for this chassis leg here, we need J5 going in there and then that attaching to K39. The one thing I do like about Hobby Boss plastic is it works really nicely with um, Time You're Extra Thin. It just seems to bond really, really well. And you don't need an awful lot of it to get a good strong bond. So that is that leg there. So I'm just focused on these two pieces on the end because they're obviously internal and we need all the internal bits done first. And we've got this side here. It's got the same piece in it. That piece goes on there. There's the end bit. Now I've got a little bit of cleanup to do on these two. I'll do that in a minute. Actually missed a little nub there. Right, so inside the chassis leg we've got one, two, three of the H17s, which is these parts here. And what I found with them is that they right, that's that bit there. Right, so is they seem to clip in reasonably nicely. Very good snug fit. At least some of them were in some of the parts. Right, no, not so much in there. So we need one there. Uh, and the next one goes in here. And the last one goes in there. And you drop a glue in each of the locating holes. If there is the chance of actually seeing any of this detail is pretty slim. However, I say it's got to be there, it's got to be there, so we may as well put it in. If we go, there we go. Last one. There we go. We will press home. Make sure it's sound in the locating hole. And then we've got this part here, which is D23. And D23 is going in here next to this last H17. And that should be the last of the interior detail parts. I've obviously got a bloody fingerprint on the plastic. So I wasn't watching what I was doing. Where's that thing going? There we go. That's it. Right. It's the one curse with Tamiya Extra Thin is if you happen to get some under your fin finger with capillary action, you'll leave a fingerprint in your project. Right. So, this part now gets turned around. Um, and it's telling us that we need to use this part here. 
and that goes in here and there. Not quite sure on that. Possibly there. Maybe there. Yeah, I think it's there. Kind of looks like a right place for it to be. Just got a little seam line to clean up here. So scraping with a scalpel blade is often the quickest and cleanest way of getting rid of a seam line. And you'll see a lot of, um, certainly model, modelers from the Far East use um, carbon steel scrapers to scrape seams. As long as you do it carefully and you don't go overboard then it works fine but you can scrape a little too much and adjust the profile of the piece you're working on so all things in moderation but that part does seem to fit reasonably well there so we'll go with that right we're ready to start putting this thing together so here's all our cross members. We'll keep them in orientation, but just slide them out of the way so we can actually see what we're doing. Might as well start with his back cross member. You'll note that I've put the photo etch, but I haven't put the lights on it. I'll leave them till once we've painted it. So that just slips in over the part we put in. Not sure just how far into the frame it goes, but hmm. oh yeah, that's as far as it goes. So a little bit of glue lock that into place. Right. Next cross member, this one here. That goes in there. So there is reasonably good locating tabs where these cross members are going. Touch of glue either side. Next one is this here. And that sits in here. This one might need a little fettling because obviously it's made up of multiple parts. But you can see here I'll zoom it in a pretty bit. There we go. So you can see here and here are the locating ribs for these things to go into. But because, yeah. Make sure I've got it the right way around. Goes in that way. Those right angle plates are just slightly too wide for the chassis, so we'll just need to take them down. So, medium sand and stick. I may as well do both sides at once. So, just, just one or two rubs with a stick just to. And just stop and try. There we go. That's all it needed. Drop of glue. There's a brand new bottle of glue broke out for this build especially. Right, next cross member is this giant cross member here. That goes in where? Here. Okay, that's a reasonably good fit. Yep. Next cross member is this. That obviously sits on the top rail of the chassis. And that 
that sits in there. Okay, give them a little bit of glue. Now you could use super glue for some of these parts if you want them to set up quickly and hold their location. Uh, that wouldn't be a problem because you're using enough parts with extra thin to have that chemical bond where it's actually physically melting the plastic um, that you could reinforce these with a bit of extra thin once you're finished. Right, this part here goes in the locating holes here but it also has to lock in to the dry flange here. Now actually what they should have said on the instructions is lock this in together first and then there we go. I haven't actually glued that joint so it is movable so it gives us a bit of flexibility. But now that's locked together we can then locate this here where it was and then it's a perfect location for that engine sump. Okay, and just come in with the glue and run it down into the joint and you're going to get a really really good strong bond which is what we want but the other benefit of having this sort of curbside uh, engine plate is we're going to get a square chassis because this great long glue in edge here it'll keep it all square and that is definitely something we want Right, last chassis member is going here. Where does that go? Yeah, is that bit. So that locks in there. And drop the glue. And that obviously has to glue up to here. We'll do that when we get the other side on. And then we need G24, and I didn't get that one. Find the G screw. It's just a huge pile of screws, and you are. It would have been ideal if G4, if you could have gotten this all these parts molded in one sprue. But obviously, molding doesn't work that way. And you've got to plan your sprues as to how best the plastic flows, not just how convenient it is to the modeler. Few swipes of the sounding stick that's all the sprue attachment points done and uh, orientate that one and it is going right on the front leg here a little spot glue and in there it goes Right. So now that we've got one side together, it should be easy enough to lay it on its side on a flat surface. So I move that back a bit. You can see that. So we'll lay it on its side and then we'll come in with the other chassis member. We should just be able to pop it down onto it it should lock in it might even actually be better if we lay it on its back so let's have a look at this so that bit goes in there and the same locating marks are on this side as the other so it will just drop together so we're going to start with this engine area first because that is obviously the biggest gluing surface which is going to give us this nice square straight chassis so we've got the front that front must cross member here and then we've got the cross members here and this is the important bit so you can see just how much that chassis is playing out so it's not a bad thing to just um do a bit of dry fitting make sure we're getting the locations right there once it locks in it's really solid good so we'll come in here with some glue. We'll run it right.
right down the joint. Plenty of glue. So it gets a good, strong bond. And we want to make sure that that is, both of those parts are pushed up onto that top chassis rail edge. Because that's where they need to be. That's where the strongest bond is going to be. And then the next one is here. So again, we want to make sure it's pushed together. We get some glue in here at the end, the cross member, and then glue along here. If we can see where it's going to be sitting, button up to the engine under tray. So this is going to make this front of this chassis absolutely rock solid. That's what we want. And this glue is going off very quickly, so it's nice. Right, so the next one is the big box section here. Again, drop of glue either side. And then we're moving on to this one here, drop of glue either side. Push it together, make sure it's home. And you can be reasonably firm with this because you do want it to be in the right location. Otherwise you're going to end up with problems. So this side here, and this is where we're going to come unstuck a little bit because it doesn't want to fit. Same problems we had on the other side. So we might just be able to manipulate that in. So there's a little bit of flex. Yes, there is. Right, we've got that in, so drop a glue. We'll drop a glue in there because that will help ease the pressure and then glue to glue it into the chassis there. And that is the beauty of Tamiya Extra Thin is that it it can melt itself and glue joints reasonably quickly. Last section to glue. There we go. And that is the rearmost cross member in place. Now obviously we need to make sure that we, you can see there's a bit of weave there. We don't want any of that. We want it straight and level. I've also got another fingerprint there. We'll have to get that sanded off. So What we can do to make sure we don't have any weave in the chassis is get a rule and down the side like this and you can see that that is absolutely bang straight with the straight edge of the rule so that's good what we need to do now is let that cure and this is the basis for our whole tractor unit so it is a really important part that we get right so that's straight on both sides so i'm really quite happy with that very substantial part and it's going to be the yeah the building blocks for everything else we do on this kit but certainly the tractor unit so i'm going to leave that cure up i've got a, a couple of these external parts that need to go on um, both sides so I'll get them on as well and then we will move on to part two which is basically turning it over and adding some more cross members suspension mount points some linkages and then these this bonnet assembly that we're not supposed to cement so yeah that's coming on so back in a little moment when we get the rest of part one finished and we'll be moving on to part two so see you shortly welcome back guys so um step two now i've taken the time to actually get all these small parts off the sprues cleaned up a couple of sub assemblies so we had h20 and h9 six of those and then you had j26 j25 there's two of those made um, so I thought, yeah, if I did this, it's going to keep the build moving along. 
I can't imagine for the life of me anybody's going to want to watch me cut all these parts off and clean them up individually. And it's going to take hours. How's it going so far then? Not too bad. Um, there is a little bit of flash. There was some flash on some of these parts. Um, and a little bit of adjusting needed to get them to fit. But on the whole, they're not too bad. Right. So starting with this step here, obviously we need to orientate the chassis in the right orientation for the job we're doing. And then we need to offer up the parts. So they seem to fit not too bad. So back with our Tami are extra thin. So just a reasonable amount. You don't need to go overkill. It will find its way around all the nooks and crannies. You can just paint a little extra on once you get the part stuck in place. And just remember if it's all over the chassis, it could be all over your fingers. You're going to get fingerprints. And that you do not want. I think the check with this is to make sure that all the parts are in exactly the same orientation. And the big worry when you're building models like this, especially if they're rigid axles, is that you get an axle that's lifted off the ground. So you need to constantly make sure that everything's equal to one another uh, so that the axle fastening points are equal and the axles will sit equal on the floor. There are ways of sorting out problems like that, but if we can avoid it in the build, we're doing making our life far easier. So just work your way from the back to the front or from the front to the back, whichever way you like doing it. Just try and do it in a methodical manner and that way you avoid making unforced errors. It's good when you start getting parts on the chassis and start filling these holes and it really does give it a sense of purpose. And it adds a little bit more strength each item you put on. So, Right, so we've got on those. And the next one is this piece here. This is F36 and F6. So keeping the chassis in the right orientation. We're looking for the cutouts for these. So it's actually a bit deceptive, but it's here by the transmission. They go on the chassis rail like so. They're not fitting 100%, and I'll tell you what it is. It's this locating nub is just a little too big. So we just come in with a file. Take that down a little, make sure we get away any shavings that are going to... There we go, perfect. And it's little alterations like this that will end up making the model an awful lot better. Because you get that square joint. So we're going to just preempt the other side and do the same before we even put any glue near it. I've said this before. And no doubt I probably will say it again. But one of the best tools or set of tools that any modeler can invest into. Other as a good pair of sprue cutters and a scalpel. The best tool you can get is a set of good quality needle files. Because you can do an awful lot of clean up with them. If they're sharp, they cut the plastic very neatly. They minimize burring. But the other thing with this is it's dead. Um, it's it's flat. It's parallel. So you can get uh, a flat and, pa and square file. You're not going to round edges off. It's just going to be flat. So if you can get them. This was a draper set of needle files. And... I've had them for years and they work perfectly and they're as sharp now as the day I got them. 
Right, just eyeball those two to make sure that they're level and equal. Uh, then we've got this piece here is going to go on there, and that just locks in. Check it's locked in equally on either, both sides. Drop a glue. Looks like a bit of a gearbox cross member, maybe. Make sure that's set properly. Happy? Yeah. Right, next cross member. That just goes on here. It's a nice fit. That's the thing, if you take your time, you're building the chassis square, these parts will fit and there'll be no stress. All right, F42. Make sure we get the right hole. So I think it's this one here. We've got that mark there, which is that mark there. So this one goes on here like so and what we can do is check down here and that looks exactly where it needs to be which is good same on the other side and you can see where the positive fit of these locating tabs are as i'm just being able to push that in and it's just locking in the hole it's a really good fit and it'll hold itself in there until we come in with the extra thin to glue it in place So moving down the chassis, we've now got these fellows here. So that um, goes in here. And that looks like a front axle bump stop rubber and mounting to stop the uh, front axle from bottoming out if they go over a bit of course road. So they fit nicely in place and then we've got this piece of cross member here that looks to go in here. Right, is there any locating marks or do we just have to eyeball it? Oh yeah, there is. So if you look on this end here, there is this line here that marries up with that there. Check underneath. You can just about see it. Obviously didn't glue. Wasn't that interesting? I either glued it or it's popped apart. I don't think I glued that. I must have missed that last night. Oh, we can do something about that now, can't we? Right, 
just going to let this glue for a moment before we go on to the next part of part two. And I'm sure you don't want to sit here seeing me hold this part together. So I'll be back in a moment.